And now uh, to our first conversation, expanding uh, oil, uh, non-oil exports remain the matter of strategic economic importance requiring continual intervention. We see the impact of the pandemic on oil demand and by extension, the price of crude oil in the international uh, commodities market further exposed Nigeria's over-dependency on crude oil earnings and its susceptibility to oil-related uh, vagaries. Well, let's get a sense of the prospects and challenges of non-oil export. We have uh, Ms. Bosun Sholari, Chairman, uh, LCCI Export Group, join us right here on the program. Uh, great to have you. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, uh, to great to there. have you uh, join us this uh, Friday morning. But uh, please, can you paint a picture of the current state of uh, non-oil exports in Nigeria? Because that conversation has been going on for a while now. Thank you so much. I, let me first start by acknowledging and um, thanking the NEPC so much. Because without them, the feat we have recorded wouldn't have been so. And so it's for me on behalf of exporters, especially the MSMEs, to say a big thank you to NEPC, especially the new CEO, who came from the rank and understood what we go through. And this man has done so much. And then like we say, if all agencies of government will work like NEPC, most of these problems will be surmounted. So, and then having said that, let me first start with the challenges. MSMEs form over 90% of the, the non-oil exporters, especially with the intervention of Mr. Vice President two years ago for COVID relief. Many of them registered their businesses with MAGDA. And that's why you're seeing so many things now in the market and then you wonder, can these things come from Nigeria? But of course it can come, but you know we have challenges with racing funds. And so when he made sure that with less than 8,000, most of us could register five products. And then that's why so many products are there. But you will not think of rejects. Because I need to just tell you this few story. Rejects in the international market. Most of government agencies that should help us have even become in quotes our enemies. You find NAVDAC over-regulating like the vice president you see. You see some, some activities being duplicated with NAVDAC. And most of these agencies believe I've had to register just one more product with five that I registered during COVID pandemic, And it took me 90,000. And I tell them that they believe once you register your product, you're going to be carrying dollars in, in Ghana, Moscow. And that is not it. Because they don't, most of these agencies don't even want to know there is a global warming. The economy of so many, uh, I mean, so many of the countries are so bad. You see what we're facing in Nigeria that people can have this. So many people have not sold a dime this month. And then government agencies, all they want is get, get. For instance, I'm looking at it. Why can't NAVDAC raise donor funding and help entrepreneurs to get certified? Because, and then when it, it is difficult to get certified, people will cut corners. And that's where they keep carrying things through back door. They bribe their way, and then they get there, they are rejected. And we're destroying the image of this nation, not knowing that we're affecting all ourselves. So for me, let all the government agencies have a human face. I call any PC exporters friend, and that is the truth. I will, al right. I will always say it anywhere. Okay. They help exporters. They help exporters. And most of the agencies should do that. Now, coming back to your question, right. there's no way oil, we have all seen what oil has been. Yesterday, they have said they paid, CBN says they paid over three billion as incentives to how many people? Until CBN will look at what they did for their Greek sector, ask Miss Low, and deliberately pay attention to exporters, small exporters, so that they too can move up to the level a Greek people moved up to, except for this insecurity that has brought that down. But intervention was quite good for their Greek sector. There's what, there's this mantra now that NEPC launched, Exports for Survival. If everybody does not sit down to help, we may not get there. Paying three billion is not it. Get some of this funding, help exporters get this standardization and certification. The minimum is asking. Team up with, uh, NEPC has done that for over 100 people, free. They have helped people to pay for FDA, free. And then more of our things are going up. And that's where you are seeing some money coming in. Until we do this, and I said something. I said, let us do like what they did for uh, the security sector. 
sector. Right. Launch and export trust. Okay. So that All right. export. All right. Yeah. Okay, Ms. John Larry, looking at the, you know, the AFCFT, that's the African Continental Free Trade Agreement, that's been signed, you know, for a while now. How do you see it impacting, you know, Nigeria's uh, non-oil export drive? I will say COVID delayed after. But I know as at uh, about three weeks ago, Morocco joined, about to ratify, or if they have ratified, and they are hopeful that many more will ratify, and then... We are also hopeful by maybe first quarter of next year it will start. But you see, the issue is if we don't solve our issues, especially logistics has been one of them. Because if you want to take anything to Ghana, it will take you seven working days. How are we going to compete? It's so expensive. So CBN and the government need to look at the area of logistics. Why are they not calling a conference of this logistics company begin to prepare some of them towards that activity. Because otherwise, we will be a dumping ground. After is what I want to talk about. But if we're not fully ready, if our industries are not fully ready, and one of the things I will enjoy those who are listening today to do, especially CBN, if they're going to fund anything, you, you can help fund dehydrators, millers, and filling machines. By the time you do that, you would have taken a lot of bulk and problems of the neck of exporters, and then we can fully go on this journey to say we can't continue to trade in our commodities. Do you even know what's happening now? Because some of these countries are enjoying our commodities, they don't want to buy our finished products. They keep giving excuses. But if we have our ASIP label there, maybe that will make them believe in us more, that we have been able to go through a third party certification. Unless we do all that, we're still playing. And then this noise we're looking for 200 billion FX or whatever yearly may just be a mirage. Wow, right. Uh, what, but but uh, I, I saw the central bank uh, governor actually talked about the role, you know, the port authority actually play, you know, in, in all of this, you know, helping, you know, boost the non-oil export uh, diversification. What what kind of uh, regulation would you like to see, you know, coming from the, from the ports? From the port, of course. All this delay cannot help anybody. Okay, you have those who are still trading in commodities that form bulk of the traders now. Their goods won't get to the port in one month, two months. Which importer is going to wait for all that? So one, like the legal state is doing, and then every agency must come together. Of course, I'm sorry, the military, paramilitary are on the road. They said they were checking that. And I went through that corridor not too long. They came down but we need to pay a holistic approach to it to make sure. They have also dedicated Lily Pond to the export terminal, which is also good. But we still need to check, number one, these guys on the road, before these containers get to the port, they will stop them. This uh, local government will collect this one. These are all the approaches we need to put in place and checkmate all this. And that has to do with bulk of the things is from Lagos State because of their local government. These guys lining up the road and won't allow these people to go. That's also one of the issues. So all this thing is not just one agency. We need to look at every agency, every state, every local government that has to do with the passage of those goods when it gets to NPA. Because if NPA is ready, the road is not ready. These things will still happen. And then you keep seeing rejects because the importers will cancel the export. And then we also know that we have packaged these things, these materials inside a container. Are we looking at the lifespan he gets there and that one will reject it. Who pays? People are losing money, seriously, and people are dying because they cannot pay back. So these are some of the areas that they need to also look at. It's a whole lot of problems within the way. And then are we even looking at the materials where it's coming from? When farmers cannot, I am a farmer. I have not gone to my farm since February last year. Ask me why. I don't want to be kidnapped. Right. Because I don't have people who will pay ransom, who will pay ransom for me. And then I have people going to the farm. Then they tell me last year, I had so much to harvest in plantain. And they said before they got there, the people have got in there and they have harvested all. I also have a guy who will come, my cassava and my corn, who carry uh, his cow there and eat everything as we do. They feed on it. And but let me also say, we know the, the menace of health men are much, but some of our people, especially in the West there, are contributing to it. Most of those people who own those cows, are the locals, the ballers, the chiefs, some politicians. It's the way they get Megan from Niger 
from the north to come and help them look at their house, that they also get those guys to come and tend to their uh, cows. And then when you're doing that business, why are you not getting a place where they will feed from? But you allow these guys, because you share the offspring with them, you allow these guys to take those things into people's park. One day I saw this guy, and I said, hey, can you look at me? Will you allow me, a woman at my age, to suffer, and then you come and feed on this? Because I could muster some house language, because I'm from Shagamu, my family's in Ogun State. And this guy said, oh, mama, yeah, I I'm not going to come here again. And afterwards, <laughs> what has he done? Everything we have planted this year, they have eaten it up. So we keep looking at food is expensive. We can't even feed. Food security is a problem in Nigeria because of these things, because you can't go to the farm. You are afraid of being fit now. Some people are there. People quite quite a number of uh, issues, uh, quite a number of issues there. Mm -hmm. But you know, talk, looking, still looking at the uh, issues with the port. You know, I, I've heard that some of the exporters have had to, you know, take some of their uh, goods through neighboring countries like uh, uh, Accra and uh, Benin Republic. How's that uh, actually working out? Exactly, because what they do is that maybe some of those vehicles to go in the night. And then they will have up, although that road too is bad, because I plant rice in Badagi. You have over 100 checkpoints on the way. After answers, it came down, but they have started. And then people are paying. You saw the transporters uh, protesting last week or two weeks ago. You have all those things on that axis. In fact, before you even cross the border, the immigration is doing their own. They will collect from everybody. When are we going to leave this place? Mm -hmm. We must develop this country. I tell people, the fact that you receive salaries and then you know you are getting fully employed does not mean everything is well with you. Because when the chips are down, your salary will not be able to save you because all of us will be under this insecurity that's about to blow up. So the right. truth is that when people cannot get to the port, they will look for how to do their business. And that's what they pull up. It's more expensive and then how they compare, but they are lucky because they are doing commodities where they see more money. If you do value addition, you can't do that because if you do that one, then your prices will be out of this one. And it is value addition, process finished goods that can save this country, not this commodity we do. Because these people there want to keep us selling our commodities so that we keep collecting and then they can dictate the price and reject it when they want. So the answer is finished products and our government will be ready to actually follow up the mantra of uh, NEPC export for survival. Right, and uh, it's all about uh, export promotion right now. But what kind of investments do you think we can see from the private sector to actually help in all of this? Yes, I just said most private sectors, if I go and see now the queues for FX, there are people who need these things. So don't leave those who are generating it to suffer it. That's why I said whether there should be a trust fund for exports, so that this trust fund can be given at a 5% interest rate. You go to the bank, they tell you uh, the, it's shareholders' fund. You come and give you that money at 25% or 15%, as we call it. At the end of the day, because labor is expensive, there is no, there is no uh, energy. You have to be your government and co you provide. Diesel is uh, almost going to 800 Naira. How will people survive? So we need, in fact, if it is not a grant, like NEPC is doing, then give it to us at 5%. People are ready to pay this money, but outside there is so volatile and so unencouraging. So we cannot continue. That's why so many things are happening. So we need to do a trust fund for export before we can achieve all these things. Right, and uh, you know, looking at where we are, you, you know, right now, what what uh, responsibility do you see for the next uh, government, you know, that's going to come in? What would you like to see from them, you know, in boosting this uh, non-oil export? I hope everybody will be sincere to what they are all saying, because the society has been dollarized and naturalized, and uh, I hope we will have. We are, they are complaining that this government is taking too much loans. I hope by the time we have used all the money to bribe delegates and bribe voters, we will have enough money for what we are seeing. And I just hope Nigeria will not die in their time. So they need to listen to some of these things and follow through. And I hope uh, whether APC gets there or PDP, they must just follow what the government has done. Because if you want to start again, you bring us back to the stone age. 
So whoever is going to do it, the key to survival, if our balance of trade cannot balance, we keep recording negative every time. I went to Botswana, a small country of 2.4 million. Their exchange rate is 11.7 to a dollar, a small country of 2.4. You cannot spend dollar anyhow in Botswana. You have to go to a road chain. They will collect your passport, collect everything. I went for a Pan-African Chamber of Commerce um, conference. I'm a member of Lagos State. I mean, Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, the chairman of the Expo Group. And that's what is happening in that small country. So why can't we help ourselves? Because everybody is going after importation. Even the more we have tried, some people will sit there, you are Nigerian goods are not good. When are we going to come out of this? Are we trying to kill this country because we must buy and uh, take labor to other countries and our people are not employed and we're blaming the government every day? We're not seeing how we are contributing to it. When we go and import toothpick, is it not to just pick this thing? <laughs> it is well just right. Uh, so much to to unpack there, but it, it, it has come to that point where we need to uh, substitute uh, at this point. It's uh, it, it can be business as usual uh, going forward. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, we must be disciplined. Yeah. Yes, and buy buy Nigeria, buy Nigeria. I, All right, thank you so much, Ms. Bosu Ashwalari, uh, uh, the chairman LCCI Export Group. It was great having you on the program today. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, so enjoy your day. All right.